Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and recently I started working with C Sharp with Godot 4, now that Godot 4 is out. It's been a long time since I worked with C Sharp in Godot, I wanted to see what the experience was like, and I wanted to try it with a different tool than my regular Visual Studio code. So I went over to JetBrains Tools and checked out Rider. Now if you've never heard of Rider before, it's their .NET focused IDE, although truth of the matter is, it's slowly becoming their game development IDE. And if you go to the page, you'll notice something as you scroll down. Look at the gaming category. You got Unity, you got Unreal, and you've also got Godot. So yeah, Godot support is coming or has been sort of implemented inside of Rider. So we're going to look at exactly what that support looks like. Uh, if you've not heard of Rider before, it is a commercial IDE. So you see here, it's uh, 150 bucks a year or like $15 a month if you want to go ahead and buy it. Although if you're willing to like walk on the wild side, you can get into the early access program, in which case it is completely free. Although obviously you're running on a uh, early access version, which can have some issues. But honestly, I've never really had an issue with any of their tooling. Uh, you'll notice they do have Unity support. It's a very nice IDE for Unity. It directly hooks into um, the Unity game engine. It uh, gives you the ability to run Unity remotely. It allows you to re-output the output window over to uh, the um, the IDE itself. You get all of the code hitting code hints and refactoring tools and debugging support, Unity unit tests, and so on. So there's a lot of functionality there uh, from the Unity side of things. Now, interestingly, and this is why I say Rider is sort of their game development IDE, they've also added support for Unreal Engine. And this includes actually C++ support. So instead of actually using, say, C Lion, which is a dedicated C++ IDE, you can actually use Rider, and it can support both C Lion, sorry, C++, as well as Blueprint support there. Uh, so you've got direct integration to use uh, Unreal Engine as your editor of choice if you're working with Unreal Engine as well. But what we are talking about today is Godot. Now, there's no neat link here for me to click about Godot, uh, so let's just jump in and go hands-on with it. So first thing you're going to need is a project. Uh, okay. Uh, so I have created this empty project right here. And you know, let me just not full screen that guy so you can see my start bar. All right, so empty scene here. We're just gonna go ahead in our 2D scene and we're just gonna add an icon into the world like so. And the big reason I did this is because I wanna come in here and add a script to it. I'm gonna obviously add a script of type C sharp and we will create that. There is our empty script and we'll just go ahead and run our project. We'll save this current guy as a scene and we are good to go. So we now have a project set up that we can work with inside of Project Rider. There's nothing happening with it, but we do have a Godot C sharp project. Now let's go see what the experience is like. So next thing we're going to need to do is load up Rider. Now, once we are here, what we want to do is go ahead, go to open and then navigate to our folder. So we're going to go ahead in that folder and select said folder and it will open it up. Now, if this is the first time you've launched it, you're going to get a little pop up down here saying, uh, Godot Project Detected, would you like to install the plugin? At this point, you want to go ahead and say yes. We'll come back to plugins in just a second because there's actually another very cool one uh, for this project here. But over here, you'll see icon.cs is available. And let's open that one up. Now, this is a typical code editor. There are color themes and so on available for it. I can also zoom in and zoom out the code so you can actually read what I'm working with here. There's also this neat little undo for that. The another nice thing I really like about all of the IntelliJ ID or the um, JetBrain IDEs is you come in here to view. You've also got appearance mode for you got these different options. So if I'm doing a presentation, I can do this and you can see my code as I'm typing it, which is a very nice way of doing things. Also, I have this other mode here, which is Zen mode. So I can actually go here enter Zen mode this is a full screen code mode you can zoom in zoom out however you wish but literally it's just you and your code I do find something about it actually quite well Zen and of course we can exit out of that as well so I'm just gonna stick with the the normal editor so let's here we'll exit out of uh, uh, presentation mode as well so we're just gonna go here we'll zoom things in a little bit oops I already wrote my code here so I'm gonna go ahead we'll write some code that we want to work with here nice thing you're gonna see here is you are getting just out of the box code completion so you are getting your IntelliSense of suggestions etc and um, as you type things in so move local X nice and responsive and so on you do get tips and suggestions of what the actual code does as you are typing which is nice and then when you type it in you also get the field of uh, parameters that are suspected which is also nice so we'll go ahead there is our code so simple code done now how do we go about and run this guy well when you install that plugin it automatically installs runners for you which are quite nice you're gonna sum down here you're gonna see you've got editor player like so we're gonna go ahead and run the player we can go ahead right here hit run so if you're doing an editor extension you could also run it to the editor I believe this is the other option we can either do a run mode or a debug mode now I'm just gonna go ahead and do a run mode and boom 
there is our project running in the Godot game engine. No need to flip over to Godot or anything like that. It remote controls it for you. And you see here the uh, output spits out down here. Uh, I don't know that you're getting full console um, written across between the two tools yet, uh, but it is definitely a work in progress. Now, one of the things that you are going to find kind of annoying is that if you have the code open over here, it will constantly prompt you, like, do you, like, do you wish to relight, overload, resave? Uh, that's just kind of the nature of two tools kind of working on the same thing. But as you can see, very simple to uh, create and handle code this way. Now, neat thing, I'm going to come up here, and let's go down here, and we'll just do a... Um, a private float move by equals one, like so. And then here, each update, we'll go move by plus equals 0 0.01, like so. Why can't I update it? So the nice thing is you do also get the errors from double to float. Oh. Duh. All right, here we go. Uh, so there, I've done my update, and now I'm just going to switch this out to use move by instead. One of the things you will know if you ever work with any of their tools, they have a ton of uh, refactoring code hints, suggestions, and so on tools here. You're going to notice them all showing up over here on the side box. So if you want suggestions or changes or if there's um, different instructions they want or you want to change out and refactor things you do have full refactoring tools available here uh some of the best refactoring tools available to be honest so let's go ahead now what we're going to do is we'll go here and set a breakpoint here and we will do a debug instead and we see how debugging works and debugging is uh very simple so we'll go ahead we run it our code runs here updates immediately hover over there you can see this the total uh you have your typical next so i gotta be careful about which buttons i press because f10 actually will um stop my video recording so i'm just gonna do let's do a step over step over and on it go oops Okay, now I'm in the decompilation. By the way, there is automatically decompilation as well. So here you can see we jumped into a method as opposed to just continuing. And it does real-time decompilation as well. So if you're working with someone else's source code, uh, there is decompilation if you navigate into code that you don't have access to, uh, which is actually quite nice. Instead, what I'm going to do is go ahead and resume it. And then here we are on the next run through. And obviously, you can see the increment there. Um, Kind of went up just a little bit. Once again, that standard off by 0.00001 kind of thing that seems to always happen in computer science. And just keep running. And again, you're going to see the changes as things go. And then you want to stop a breakpoint. You end the breakpoint here. You got control over the breakpoints over here. Uh, so you can do conditional breakpoints and so on. Um, and yeah, you got a variety of different options on your breakpoint. You got a ton of control over how breakpoints are actually operated. But that is how easy it is to actually start running your code uh, inside of of uh, Godot, debug it, and so on. Now, one question you may ask is, what about if I want to uh, work with, you know, GD script? Uh, so let's talk about that now. So again, here, we'll stop debugging here, and we're done. Go here and go into, so files, settings, and you go down here, you're going to notice there is plugins. Now, this one would have automatically found it for you. So Godot support would have been installed. But if you've already got an existing install and you want to add Godot, what you do is head on into the marketplace and just search up here for Godot. And we've already got the Godot support. So that's the C-sharp support official project from uh, the uh, JetBrains team supporting Godot. I'll show you where you can actually check that out. That's an open source project, by the way. But you'll notice here there's also GD script support, which is quite cool. And there's even the Godot theme. Now, honestly, confession time, never liked the Godot theme. I don't like the blue. It's not my thing. But here, let's go ahead and show it to you. So there, boom. So you got full theming support. So if you want to feel a bit more like Godot, so here is your Godot over here. I actually, I think I've changed it slightly. So there is that annoying resave, reload thing. So we'll reload. Uh, it's just one of those things, again, when you have two editors working on the same project, it does get a little frustrating. But there's the Godot theming. If you, if you want that, by the way, if you want to disable that, you can disable it, click a button here. But the key, key thing that you're going to want to do is install the GD script one here. Now, once you've done that, there's probably one more setting you're going to want to set, and that is this little guy over here, which will allow you to actually see the other project or other things in your project. So, for example, a GD script file, like there, with syntax highlighting, etc. In order to see that, just click and toggle this guy right there. 
So ladies and gentlemen, that is Rider running for Godot. It does make it really easy to work with C Sharp. I wouldn't use this, honestly, if I was working with GDScript. The integration just isn't as good. I would probably stick with either Godot Editor itself or Visual Studio Code. Uh, but for the C Sharp side of things, I, I like the refactoring and editing tools of uh, Rider better than I do uh, Visual Studio Code, if I'm honest. So if I'm doing primarily C Sharp work, I would definitely consider Rider for working on Godot Game Engine. Uh, now, I did mention briefly earlier on that the Godot support is not open source project. There's definitely things I would like to see added. Uh, the error output would definitely be one of them so that you can actually see the errors from Godot directly inside of Rider. I got to assume that is a work in progress. But you can see the details, what it is all about. You can contribute to the project if you wish. You'll see here it's it's reasonably active here. Uh, let's see if this is actually the the current is seen 20 yeah it looks like it is uh so it, it is a project that is under development hopefully over time we start seeing rider become a first class citizen for working with the godot game engine hopefully we see rider themselves implement gd script support but right now again it works very well for c sharp and if you've already got it if you're coming from a unity background and you want to continue to use the same ide it works great uh with c sharp and the godot game engine gd script a little bit less so uh but yeah ladies and gentlemen that is Rider with the Godot game engine. Let me know what you think. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.